Mila Salakaya Chaksu Un Milita Mena Tas Mai Shri Gurave Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Vadai Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pachari Nene Vrsesa Sunyavari Paskat Yale Sitani Pancha Kalpa Taru Vizja Kripa Sindhu Pevacha Patitanam Dhamne Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Tavuna Tiananda Sri Advaita Gadad Hara Shiva Sri Gaur Dr. Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Um, for the next uh, day or so, I'd like to speak on uh, the subject of health, and we'll cover both spiritual health and general physical health. If you could turn to the first canto, first chapter, uh, purport of verse number 10, 1110. Bring it up on the uh, screen. You know how to do that? Devi, you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I pulled it up on the screen. I will have to do share screen and it will be up in a second. Mm -hmm. Just uh, go into the purport. I can't see it. Somehow it's not clear. Hare Krishna Mataji, shall I share? Uh, I'm uh, already shared. It's not coming up. Yeah, it's very blurry. Um, unable to see the letters. Okay, would you please do that? Yes. Thank you. Your uh, it says your bandwidth is very low, Sri Devi. Oh, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Okay, so okay, I'm going to read from the purport. Well, this is um, first of a nice verse. Well, go go to the Sanskrit. And I'll read the Sanskrit. Vagena <laughs> hapayas. Sabja, Kalo, Yasmin, Yuge, Janaha, Manda, Sumanda, Matayo, Manya, Bhagya, Upadutaha. Translation. For learned one, in this age of Kali, men almost always have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, lucky, and above all, always disturbed. So I'm going to focus on the first paragraph. The devotees of the Lord are always anxious for the spiritual improvement of the general public. When the sages of Namri Sharani analyze the state of affairs of the people in this age of Kali, they foresaw that men would have short lives. In Kali Yuga, the, the duration of life is shortened, here's the point, not so much because of insufficient food, but because of irregular habits. By keeping regular habits and eating simple food, any man can maintain his health. Overeating, over sense gratification, over dependence on another's mercy, and artificial standards of living sap the very vitality of human energy. Therefore, the duration of life is shortened. So, 
So um, here, this is the reason why people suffer in this here because um, because of irregular habits. And in other words, they don't keep general regular required habits for both spiritual uh, nourishment and for material maintenance of the body and mind. Srila Prabhupada would say that one gets sick because of three things, overeating, uh, uncleanliness, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. You see the third one, anxiety is very strong in this age. People are always anxious and sometimes depressed about life, about their way of living and how they live, and then just things in general. So health is a very important part. Srila Prabhupada, I mean, I'm not sure, no, not Srila Prabhupada, but there is an old saying, if you lose your money, you lose nothing. If you lose your health, you lose something. And if you lose Krishna, you lose everything. <laughs> So health has some value. Therefore, it's important, as Srila Prabhupada used to sign all of his letters, and he wrote many thousands of letters. He always would end hoping this meets you in the best of health, your ever will wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So Prabhupada also made an indication, and he spoke a lot about health in terms of things that we could learn, that we could apply general things, specific things. He talked about different areas of health, talked a lot about Ayurveda. We talked about just general remedies by, to maintain one's health and how to eat. Because health meant basically centers around proper diet, regular exercise, and good, wholesome air, fresh air. So uh, devotees, Somehow or other, we seem to be very low on the scale in, pro in proportion to the rest of the world of maintaining health. It's uh, because of Krishna's special protection and because of devotees' diligence, we might say, um, this coronavirus hasn't affected too many devotees, but more devotees than it should have affected. Actually, many hundreds of devotees have gotten sick from Corona. And I think maybe about 10 have died. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 have died and that is that number is too high. Should have been none. Because um, we don't really know how to take care of our health <clears throat> and we don't know how to maintain our health. And so I'm gonna speak about some of the ingredients that will help uh, give us a little bit of a boost in that area, which are, is important. And I'll speak first about food. Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, that one should not eat too much or not eat too little. And that is directly related to overall health. It also is referenced to age. 
when one is young, or you, know, you might say in the youth part of their life, if one eats a little bit more than they required, it doesn't have any detrimental effect. But if one does that same thing in the later part of life, it could cause uh, disease and uh, many other problems. In uh, youth, if one eats too little, that is more detrimental than eating too much, at least in the youth. When we get older, it's more detrimental to eat too much than eating too little because digestion is the basic principle of health. Um, foods should be nicely prepared, simple, and with not a lot of extra spices and extra amounts of embellishments, which are, which cause what we say, inflammation or excess amount of problems with digestion, such as too much sugar, too much milk products, and certain foods that are not generally uh, recommended for health. For instance, there are four vegetables, potatoes, tomatoes, bell pepper, and eggplant. These are called, these are called nightshade vegetables. Uh, that means they are slightly toxic, and for some they can be a problem. If one is eating too much of these, or even for some, even eating these at all, can also cause problems <clears throat> physically. Um, white sugar is processed in some places with animal bones. And white sugar has a tendency to go through the system very really fast and gives a boost of energy, but leaves one tired very quickly afterwards. White flour, unbleached white flour is also very detrimental. Children seem to like white flour better than they like whole wheat flour because it tastes better. But whole wheat flour is more wholesome and nourishing where white flour is just as bad or even more detrimental to the body than uh, white sugar. It also has that same effect. Mm -hmm. When one is eating, one should not speak. If one is eating and speaking at the same time, uh, digestion will also be impaired. One should carefully take enough time to chew the food that is being eaten. And that way digestion starts in the mouth. And then it's not such a problem for the rest of the body to digest it like that. So sometimes we speak too much during the eating or even at all, and that could cause us not to eat, chew the food properly. And therefore that makes it difficult for digestion. Eat simply, in other words, eat a balance of vegetables. Prabhupada said grains and milk products are the staple of life. Vegetables and fruits are extra, he said, but necessary. And with milk products, uh, Prabhupada said, don't take too much. And he said, not more than one pound or not less than one half. One needs milk, but in a small quantity as a daily requirement. And ghee is very healthy and nourishing, but again, ghee can also 
cause problems if we get a, take too much ghee. So these are some little health tips with eating. Try to eat in a pleasant state of consciousness, not hurried, don't, don't be in a hurry when you are eating. It is not good for the digestion nor for the consciousness. Being in the right consciousness means to understand that the food that is coming is called prashadam. It is known as Krishna's mercy. It is the gift of Krishna for purification of the body and mind and helpful in our spiritual elevation. One should honor prashadam and not simply eat prashadam. That's why we use the word honor, because we are receiving Krishna, who is non-different from prashadam in the form of foodstuffs. <laughs> so this, uh, the consciousness, and make sure everything is clean. Prabhupada made a very interesting remark in regards to his disciples, he said that these devotees, they want to know about Raghavanuga Bhakti, but they don't even wash their hands before they take prasadam. It's important that you wash your hands thoroughly before you take prasadam. There are incidences where if you eat when your hands are unclean, you can also contribute to disease. Like that. And I've known I know one very senior devotee, he said he failed to wash his hands one time. And because of that, he got sick. And uh, be because of uh, eating, because he was eating with his hands, of course. And we do that. Most of us do that. Sometimes we use utensils, but most of the time devotees eat with their hands. Eating with your hands is actually cleaner and more um, nourishing to the body because as soon as you touch the food, the digestion system starts to work at that point. And therefore, you can actually begin digestion even from the time you place your fingers upon the food. So that's one little uh, point that could be used to improve eating foods in the right sequence according to the nature of the meal always try to eat those foods that are more difficult to digest at the beginning and then gradually go for the remainder sweets are generally taken at the end of the meal the sweet is madurya ras and it finishes off desire and the taste like that. But again, in the category of sweets, one should not be, uh, I use the same one that you always use. Yeah? One minute, I just need to stop here for a second. Something's happening here. You can't offer Boga. You can't offer Boga. You can't offer Boga. Yeah, give it to me. One minute, I'll just have to be excused for a second. I should be right back.
Sorry about the interruption. Um, our most important, one of the most important things in the process of eating is eating at the same time every day. Now, for some, that may be impossible because of our particular type of schedule, but try in the best you can to keep it within a certain range where you're always eating at the same time. Because digestion works according to the clock. <laughs> That's why it says that the fire of digestion is always highest around noontime when the sun is at the highest point within the meridian. And therefore, that usually is the main meal, is lunch. And that's, that's very important to understand because a lot of times, and this is sometimes I see this especially when I traveled to India, people have a tendency, even here in the West, who are people of the Indian orange, they have this tendency to eat a large meal in the evening time, which is really, and even Prabhupada spoke against it, it's not really good for general health. It can produce diabetes. Um, because the digestion is lesser at that time and one usually goes to rest right after. So before resting, it says that one should not eat two hours before one takes rest. And if they do, it always should be the lightest meal of the day. <clears throat> Eating huge meals at night <clears throat> is one of the fastest ways you can get diabetes <clears throat> and other digestion problems also. So um, for some of us, sometimes devotees don't, they eat very light, maybe a glass of milk or maybe not even that, maybe a little. Of course, Ayurvedic, Ayurveda says don't take fruit in the evening, it doesn't recommend taking fruit in the evening. Some people do that. Dried fruit is okay. Fresh fruit is not so good in the evening. But eating meals that are very opulent in the evening will make digestion difficult during the sleep because then one does not rest properly if the digestion system is still working when one is sleeping. And then what happens is that uh, the body doesn't get the full amount of rest and one wakes up, even though they may sleep or stay in a sleeping position for a required number of hours, they still feel tired waking up and because the digestion is still working, that means the body is working when it should be resting. Mm -hmm. Of course, Srila Prabhupada recommended for old people that they rest a little bit after each meal, especially lunch. Of course, some of us find that helpful and others find it not so helpful. That usually depends on your age and also on your uh, what you eat, how much you eat. And there are many factors with that. I know certain devotees who are very, would use the word strict. They always take rest after lunch. But then again, resting after lunch is not a long rest. It shouldn't be any more than 40 minutes. If it's any longer than that, it may cause so many other problems. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, Prabhupada also mentions, we find a lot on health from Prabhupada, is that when we wake up in the morning, before we put anything into our body, through the mouth, that is, such as water or anything, one should very carefully clean the tongue with a tongue scraper 
to get rid of all the ama that builds up on the tongue during sleep. And what is also very helpful, taking a little bit of pure uh, coconut oil and swish it around in your mouth, maybe just a teaspoon of coconut oil, swishing it around in your mouth and then uh, spitting it out. And that helps to purify the mouth because germs build up during the sleeping process. And if we take anything without cleaning the mouth first, that pushes those germs into the, into the intestines. And then there are problems like that. Prabhupada talks about how people in India, sometimes they wake up and the first thing they take is a glass of tea. And so he says it pushes all that, all those bacteria that build up in the mouth during sleeping into the stomach, into the intestines, and then there's disease. <laughs> so um, hygiene is a very important part. We need to maintain our bodies nicely. Prabhupada also said that health, sadhana, and service, he said in that order, of course, he made that statement in relationship to a particular devotee, but it also is true in a general sense, if we don't take care of our health nicely, we can't do our sadhana with clear mind, with, with enough energy, to maintain sadhana nicely. And then the Sukhor service is also affected also. So Prabhupada was very careful to make sure the devotees get enough information on health and were taking care of their health nicely because he saw how important it is in the execution of our devotional service. If our health goes down, our consciousness also may be affected by that, not necessarily, but in many cases it is. And therefore, one should be, well, we say, uh, careful to maintain your health very, very nicely. Um, we are now in this uh, coronavirus pandemic, epidemic, some people say it's worse than what it, it appears to be. Others say it's not as worse as what it appears to be. There are different, we don't really have a clear understanding of what it is or how it's working, but one has to take extra precaution during this particular time. And that precaution is certain things that help to maintain and ward off the possibility and the most important thing in maintaining health is a strong immune system. The stronger your immune system is, the easier it is to fight off any kind of disease once it enters. Uh, so maintaining good and um, strong the immune system means proper diet, proper rest, good amount of exercise, fresh air like that. We'll get into the spiritual aspect of health and some of the future talks that we'll talk about. But in general, for this um, particular time period, uh, certain things are very essential to help keep the health up and to build the immune system. One of that is one should maintain a good quantity of vitamin C even if you take too much vitamin C, the body has a tendency to expend that or expel it without any detriment. But try to take regular amounts of vitamin C. Um, also, ginger is very good. It kills uh, diseases and bacteria and it aids digestion. Uh, zinc, zinc, liquid zinc especially, they have them in tablet, but liquid is better. Try to get the pure kind, zinc and selenium. Both of these two minerals are very helpful in building and keeping away disease, building the immune system 
and keeping away disease. So um, more than ever, or you might say at this particular time, people are a little bit more concerned about their health and not to become affected by the uh, coronavirus or any, any, any other kind of disease. It's not that just because coronavirus is there, it's the only disease. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, not sometimes, the news presents that there's no other sickness in the world other than coronavirus. Uh, I can tell you a personal experience where one of my god brothers, he was telling me he knows a friend whose father uh, fell down the stairs. He was elderly and he died. And uh, so they took him, you know, they have to make out the death certificate. And on that, they put the cause of death. They put coronavirus. <laughs> he fell down the stairs. So uh, when the relatives protested about why they put coronavirus on the death certificate, uh, they said, well, you know, we have to put something there. So we put it there. And of course, the reason is that all the hospitals and any medical facilities that report deaths in coronavirus receive a financial gratuity from the state. So in order to keep that financial gratuity coming through, uh, everybody that today dies of coronavirus. So, <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. And there are so many documented cases where it's not been the cause, but it has been designated as the cause. So the point is, it's there, but also there are other, or other ways to get sick and to cripple one's health. So we spoke a little bit about food today, and I will speak a little bit more in general about health in the up and coming sessions. So I'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments related to health. You also may broaden your questions into the area, the general area of health that, what, that I didn't cover in this particular presentation. Lawanya, Sri Devi's network is low. I don't know if she can hear me. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I can hear you very well. I ended the talk. You're not saying anything. Oh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for giving us this vital and very important uh, lecture on health. Because if we maintain good health, then we can uh, serve this great mission of Srila Prabhupada nicely and uh, help others also in the process. So thank you very much for uh, enlightening us on this subject that we tend to neglect uh, as unimportant. Um, well, you're supposed to ask the devotees to speak or ask questions. That's part of becoming a host. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Dear devotees, please uh, feel free to uh, Place your questions at uh, Guru Maharaj's feed for further enlightenment. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, my question is, Maharaj, that um, there's so much talk on health even now with foods and uh, we find that eating healthy can be very expensive now uh, especially with all this uh, media about um, uh, buying packets of turmeric seems to be um, the big thing turmeric milk and all these chia seeds and uh, my question is are you vedically we were already having these foods anyway in our scriptures so how is it, how important is it to know our Ayurvedic makeup? Um, 
because someday we can feel sluggish and someday we don't feel sluggish so yeah it's good to know according to your doshas or your particular constitution there are five constitutions according to ayurveda there are there are those who are vata those who are pita those who are kalpa those who are uh, vata pita those who are uh, pita kalpa these are the basic five constitutions generally people are mixed with two um, here in Ljubljana, and some of the devotees here have been going to this one Ayurvedic doctor here. He's from, I believe, Kerala. And he gives them a diet based on their constitution. And some of the senior devotees have gone. And they were enlightened about what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat. So if you can do that, find out what is your constitution and align your foodstuffs with that, you'll find that it'll maximize at least to a certain degree the quality of your health. And so, um, but then again, there are other factors. One should, uh, if you, of course, I know who you are and I know that you cook for yourself and for your family. But there's people who eat foods cooked from outside, and that is not so healthy. Um, home cooked food, and especially cooking for your own self, is the healthiest way to maintain the cooking process like that. Mm -hmm. And when cooking is done with devotion, and that's the way our scriptures uh, and uh, enjoy that we should cook with devotion offered to Krishna and becomes prasadam, then that element of love and devotion that's placed within the food also is nourishing both to the body and the mind, and especially to the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a very subtle, but if you can, and if you, uh, it's recommended to know your constitution. For instance, I know that in the summertime, I'll give you my own personal experience. In the summertime, I can eat more foods that are sweet as opposed to in the wintertime. So if I eat sweets in the wintertime, it's likely I will get sick. More likely that I'll throw the imbalance off in my body. But in the summertime, it won't, it won't affect me as much or at all. So these are some of the subtle aspects. So learning, because the body is given to us by Krishna through the material energy. So we should be a little bit uh, aware and knowledgeable how to maintain our health and keep that health strong. And when it goes down, how to rebuild the back quickly. So food is probably the most essential part of our health regimen, along with proper cleanliness. Cleanliness is also very, if one is not clean in general, then that will also affect health. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, Marge. Uh, yeah, res please respond to what I said. <laughs> yes, Marge. Um, I remember traditionally um, growing up, so many spices and um, uh, really good digestive powders were made at home, and it was made traditionally by our parents. But now I find that it can be difficult because a when we even when we buy pure foods, we don't know whether whether it's there's been additives to that because we don't farm it ourselves. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that. That's why we we'll, in a, in a broader sense, that's what I've been talking about: the importance of 
devotees moving into a more simpler lifestyle, which will be more and more a requirement as the society becomes more and more degraded. Uh, Prabhupada wanted us to, he said, grow your own food. He said, he said, grow your own food. Um, what else did he say? He said, make your own cloth. He said, collect herbs and learn how to use herbs for, me for medicine. And he said, uh, build your own houses. In other words, uh, so uh, all these things contribute to a more healthful lifestyle. Living in the city is already a minus towards health, especially the inner cities. These buildings made of concrete, steel, and all the pollution, the noise. These are also factors that, but then again, if you're in that, you have to do the best you can to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So Prabhupada also said that um, people in India, formerly, especially the rich people, would buy whole spices and then they would grind their own spices and use it. They would never buy powdered spices because powdered, powdered spices are usually mixed in order to increase the size and the quantity of the spice, just like sometimes they put wheat powder in hang, they put wheat powder in, um, in turmeric. Um, so a lot of, some of these uh, powdered spices are also mixed with other things in order to increase the supply of the spice like that. It's another cheating principle in order to get more money from, from the public. So yeah, you can buy whole spices if you go to certain places, but that's if you want to take that trouble. But those who know how to cook, know how to use spices, and using spices really means keeping good health because proper spicing balances the whole constitutional system. Well, that's and this is these are more of the finer arts of health, but still, well, they can be instituted up to a certain degree. We will live in a very unhealthy environment. Cities are by nature unhealthy. <laughs> Yes, Marge. I mean, um, sometimes I hear often that eating healthy can be expensive as well, especially when you don't grow your own um, organic foods. And you're so right. I think we need to go back to growing our own more and more because buying from farms, even when we buy from farms, it's so expensive. And people stay away from not eating organic because of the fact they can be very expensive to mm -hmm. eat that way. Organic is not necessarily pure eating either because there are reports that they use slaughterhouse waste products for fertilizing organic food. This is a fact. I'm not saying all organic food is like that, but there are reports that slaughterhouse waste products are used for fertilizing soil. That's why Prabhupada said, grow your own food. And he said, the food you grow on your own farms are a hundred times more nutritious, he uses that exact word, than what you buy in the, in the stores and the shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you have to spend a little extra money for quality food, it's worth it because keeping up, if your health goes down for whatever reason, you have to spend money in order to try to bring it back. Uh, it's always good to do the best with quality. Don't don't pinch pennies in order to somehow or others uh, 
don't don't try to save money in order and at the same time take a chance with your health better to pay more mm -hmm. that's my opinion of course that's just an opinion For instance, milk products, uh, especially milk, um, the society is pushing everyone, especially all the temples, by uh, next year at this time, every temple in ISKCON has to have a plan for uh, getting a Himsa milk for both the devotees and the deities within the temple. And that also applies to people who live on the outside. They should also see that the hemp and milk products are much more nutritious, healthy, and safer in the general sense. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a question from Ivana on the chat. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj, would you like me to read it out? I just said so. Okay. Where do you find a qualified Ayurvedic doctor who will determine our dosh and recommend the type of diet? Say that again. Where to find a qualified Ayurvedic doctor who will determine our dosh and recommend the type of diet? Where to find one? A qualified I yeah, wait, wait, she's asking where? Yes. Yeah. Well, I know Ivana. She, she lives in Croatia. And there are many devotees there. There are a few that, who are actually well-versed in, in uh, Ayurveda in Croatia. So just inquire around from some of the senior devotees, and I'll direct you to some devotees there in Croatia. Is that all right, Anna? Okay, yeah. thank you. Just doing a little inquiry. There are devotees in Croatia that I, I can't remember particularly because I don't spend so much time there, but I know there are some. <laughs> uh, Guru Maharaj Sudha has another question. She says, can you please suggest what to eat during Ekadashi fasting based on one's ability, such as fruits, water. Your, your, your um, again, your bandwidth is very low. And because of that, your words are breaking up. So I didn't catch that. Can you please suggest what to eat during Ekadashi fasting based on one's ability? Well, there's five ways you can, according to the Ekadasi principles, there's five ways you can honor Ekadasi. One is a complete fast near gel. That's the highest. The second is just take water. The third is just take fruit. Fourth is just take fruit and milk products. And the fifth is take only grains and no grain or foods without grains and beans. So these are the five ways you can honor economy. If you find problems with that, then uh, uh, just uh, it's good to uh, fast on economy or eat very, very little and just to take a little fruit. Just following a fruit fast, Prabhupada said fruit and milk is is the recommended way for ekadasi, although he allowed devotees to follow the full pro process where you can completely fast from everything, or you could go the other way, you can take foods that are do not require, do not have grains and beans, like that. But the best ekadasi means more and more chanting and less and less bodily activities, specifically in the area of eating. So then you have to determine what's 
what what your minimum is and then go for that Is that all right, Sudha? Do you have any further follow-up questions? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Um, Guru Maharaj, if I may just ask a question about this Ekadashi fasting. We are recommended not to exercise on this day. Is that correct? No. It's not recommended not to do hard work on that day, but you can still exercise. Okay, thank you. Dear devotees, if you have any further questions regarding diet, regarding times of eating or the type of food to eat, or vitamins to or, take. Or health in general. For health in general, please, please do go ahead and ask your questions. Okay, doesn't seem to be any more questions, so we can stop here. Okay, thank you very much, and we'll continue with this subject tomorrow, and we'll get into spiritual health also, and how the interplay of spiritual health and basic hygiene work together as a one unit to help uh, strengthen our spiritual life along with our physical body and mind okay we're not the body and we're not the mind but we have to take care of it just like we have a car we we're not the car but the car has a purpose it's meant for getting us where we want to go so we have to take care of the maintenance of the car it's important to take care of the body. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for taking the time and trouble to teach us about various aspects of health. We look forward to the class tomorrow. I hope my bandwidth is better, so it will do a better job for hosting. I apologize for the poor quality. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, sorry, Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, there is a question on Facebook. Um, can I uh, ask that, Guru Maharaj? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Kaili Vrindavana Devi Dasi Mataji is asking. Oh. Kaili Vrindavana Devi Dasi Mataji. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she is asking, thank you, Maharaj, for the very relevant topic. Would you suggest only to stick to good sadhana? When one is unwell, or would you say one should always stretch oneself, even unwell, and do preaching in any way possible? No, Prabhupada said that, you know, health is first, sadhana second, and service third. So you, you should try to continue your sadhana in the best possible way. But if it requires a what we say a longer period of time to do your sadhana because of health or, or whatever and in other words keep your sadhana up but um, not at the expense of your health we want to stay healthy but and we also want to stay krishna conscious and sadhana is the basis for our practice of krishna consciousness so sometimes we can do other things that are related to our sadhana that are also sadhana. Uh, for instance, um, um, we may not be able to, you know, read so easily if we're sick. So we can, instead of reading, we might be able to hear the lectures online. 
That's one example. Uh, for chanting, we may start to chant a, a little softer, using less energy for chanting. In other words, these are some adjustments you can consider. But always um, try not to do things that will cause your health to become worse. But that doesn't mean you eliminate your sadhana. You just have to minimize it or adjust it and so it doesn't impinge on your health. Because Prabhupada wanted devotees to stay healthy so they could work continuously in Krishna consciousness like that. So um, we need to focus on spiritual health and material health. Both are, are required. Spiritual health is more important, but because ultimately we're not this body, but as long as we have this body, we have to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I'm doing a program tonight uh, at four o'clock UK time with the devotees from London. Um, do you have the link, Lavanya? Um, no, Guru Maharaj, I don't have the link. Uh, let me see. Let me go on my... Uh, stay on the line. Don't leave. Let me see if the link was sent to me just today or not. I have the old link that I've been using for this particular presentation. Let me see. Um, all right. Um, let me see here. Let's let's go for the old link. Um, I think you have.